Too much, Wolsey? Too much, Sam. thing I'd like to ever you to tell everyone was is when was the last time you drove a manual? <laughs> I haven't driven a manual since I was um, in my early 20s and you, you know I bought a Datsun 180B yep. I got a blue one and Bruce Stuhl got a yellow one and that was in the early was it? it was in the early 70s so that's uh, yours was 40 sorry. years ago I'm talking about mate so I'm... did you and Bruce still go into the dealership together? No, okay. no, no. That would have been. Well, that's, that's like a television show, Wolsey. <laughs> this is quite a surreal thing to say, but can I just say, um, bonjour, Robert. Wolves. Bonjour, Sam. <laughs> we are in the south of France, driving around. Yes. Why? Why? Because um, at the end of 2000. And 2013, my partner Julie and I decided that I was retiring from footy, from the commentary and the newspapers and so on, and we thought, let's let's have a year overseas, go overseas for a year, and um, we came here, but we thought the south of France, it's got the lovely uh, weather, and um, we had a week in Avignon, a week in saint remy and a week in Aix-en-Provence. We narrowed it down to those three places. We enjoyed them all and so we thought let's go to uh, saint remy rent a house and we rented a house for 12 months. We liked it that much we ended up buying a place. I've only been here for an afternoon but can I just say good decision. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> it is wonderful here. I hope you don't mind, I've gone straight to Wolsey, is that alright? That's fine. Familiar? Yeah, that's fine. Although Robert is quite lovely as well. <laughs> Robert? Yeah. When you're in the south of France and you're meeting new people, do you introduce yourself by saying, Je m'appelle Wolsey? No. No. Just had to ask. No. You just go with Je m'appelle Robert? Robert. No, I say Robert and, and they, they work out, well, Robert's Robert. I don't want to put on any sides, Sam. I'm not like that. No, I know. All right, now, Wolsey, you know how these things work. You've seen a couple of them, haven't you? I have. I, I've got to say, Sam, I just love the one you did with Bruce Dill. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. How, well, how you got Brucey to do it, I'll never know, but it, I'm sure everybody who saw it would have enjoyed it because <laughs> Bruce, uh, Bruce and I go back. And we, we were 15 when we both went down to Carlton. Yep. We knew each other as 14, 15 year olds and we both went down to Carlton and played in the under-19s together. And in those days, guess how much we got a game? In the under-19s? In the under-19s, 1966, oh. one dollar a game. And we gonna, thought it was Christmas. I was going to say thrippins, but that, that <laughs> would have been going too far. How many years in the under-19s, Wolsey? Oh, I had one year, Bruce had a couple, but Bruce was a... A little bit of a late developer, yeah. But he went forever. Like Bruce played till he was 36. You're in the under 19s, Wolsey. Yeah. With Bruce Dahl, who's struggling to keep up, but that's fine. <laughs> then you go to the reserves, and then you make your debut. Nine dollars a game in the reserves. Nine dollars a game in the reserves. Yes, yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm, wow. in, I'm in form four at Coburg High, and I'm getting paid nine dollars to play footy. By the way, with that, that's, a, that's, a, that's an increase of 900 percent, Wolsey. That's yeah. you know, not bad. No, no, that was good. The year before, playing for Coburg Amateurs in the under-15s, I had to hand over two bob for the umpire's fee. <laughs> you make your debut round two, 1967 versus Hawthorne. Yes. Your memories? Um, I can remember on the um, Tuesday or Wednesday night before, Ron Baresi came to my home. And um, my father was in hospital, he'd had a heart attack. And um, Barassi came to my home and he asked my mother if it was okay if I played in the senior team. I was 16. And I can remember being in the room when he asked her that and I'm thinking, God, I hope she says yes. <laughs> and of course she did. That's nice. And um, so I, uh, 
I got that first game. I played it full forward and the ball came down, went out of bounds in the forward pocket. And I can remember at the boundary throw in, I looked at John Nichols. He was the ruckman. He stared at me and then he stared at a bit of vacant grass. And I thought, I think he wants me to run to that spot. So when the ball was thrown in, I ran to that spot. He's hit the ball down my throat. I snapped the goal with my first kick in league footy. And I learned um, there's more ways to communicate than just with your voice. So next week against North Melbourne, I kicked a couple. And the next week against Melbourne at the MCG, Carlton won by something like 12 goals. I was full forward. Yep. I got one kick for the game. One kick for the game, and after the game, everybody was celebrating, and uh, I was shattered. I stayed on for the entire game, and I just, I just knew I'd be dropped. And I can remember driving home, and my mother was driving, and I'm sitting in the passenger seat, and this is what mums are like. My mum said, "Oh, Robert, I thought you played really well." <laughs> I said, "Mum, I said I'm going to get dropped. I had one kick, and I got dropped. And again, you learn lessons, and that is, yep. you're as good as your last game." Ron Barassi didn't come and ask your mum if, you were, if he was allowed to drop you, did he? No. No? no. He just dropped you? Yeah. yeah. You played in five grand finals in your first six years. Yeah. Lucky. Oh, lucky, wow. but also we worked hard. We, we yeah. were a disciplined team. We had great coaches in Barassi and Nichols. Three premierships. Yeah. 68, 70, 72. And big crowds, Sam. Like, the 70 was the highest crowd ever, 121,000. Can you tell me something about the 1970 grand final that I haven't heard before. Cool. Well, at three quarter time, when we had such a fantastic third quarter, we were 44 points down at half time. And then, I don't know what we were down at three quarter time, it might have been 10 points or something. You know, we'd, we'd come right back. Yep. I don't know whether Barassi, the coach, it was a ploy or I don't know whether it was a ploy or whether he was genuine, but I remember him saying, fellas, you've been fantastic. No matter what happens, I'm so proud of you that you could come back like that. Okay. And the immediate reaction was from the player, hey, hey, hang on, we're not done with yet. We're, we're going to win this. Like, uh, don't don't say you're happy with a fight back. We're, we're going to win this game. And uh, I sort of think that perhaps Barassi was smart enough to sort of, again, sow the seed that, hey, get it from the players, job's not done. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, Walsy, uh, Brass's uh, three-quarter time speech is uh, often lost in history to compared to the half-time speech. Yeah, yeah. Of which, I, which, on the record for me, yeah. what do you remember him saying? At half-time? Yeah. Oh, I can remember coming in at half-time and uh, the first thing he did, there was the trestle with the uh, uh, cordial drinks, with yeah. you know, the little uh, plastic cups of cordial. Oh, yeah. Might know where this is going. He upended it. <laughs> he, just, he just tipped it upside down yeah. so no one could have a drink. And uh, he's just gone off his head. And I remember he had a stats sheet in his hand and uh, and he was just screaming out 15 handballs, 15 freaking handballs in half a game of football. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the message was, well, God, how can you expect to win if there's no play on, there's no dare, there's no boldness. And again, that's the thing about Barassi. He, he dared you to be bold and, uh, and pretty much what he did was really bold in that he, he just threw caution to the wind and said, right up. Hopkins is on, Thornley's out of the game. Let's see how we go. You've been here in the south of France for a year, Wolsey. Yes. I don't think you've changed that much, but any time in the last year, have you been tempted to just put on the beret and buy a little French poodle and just walk around town, you know, with a baguette and, and say the top like this? Has it, have you changed it all this year? Uh, I think I'm more mellow. I think I'm more relaxed. Um, I ride the bike into town to get the baguettes every now and again, and I've wow. got one of those little baskets on the front of the bike, and uh, you pedal the bike, you've got the beret on, and you've got the baguette in the basket. It's hard to think of yourself as being more French than that. Well, all you need to do is start singing an Edith Piaf song, <laughs> and then you just have it all you know, complete. That's right. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. It's a beautiful life. I want to 
ask you this about the 1972 grand final, Wolsey. Mm. You win that, you kick six. Yes. Best on ground, unofficially, officially. Why did you celebrate by having a bath with Bruce Dool? <laughs> yes. Look, I. It's a famous photo. I, I have got very little football memorabilia. Um, no jumpers, no boots. The Premiership medallions, yes. Photos, very few, but that's one photo that I've got, and that is Bruce and myself holding the Premiership Cup in the bath after the game. Um, and I guess it's because we go back such a long way. Uh, a very special moment for us. Yeah. It's beautiful, mate. Can I ask you this? This, this might be a bit sensitive, but I don't even know the story, Wolsey. But in 77, 78, you're the captain of Carlton. Mm -hmm. In 79, you're not there. No. So what happened? Uh, I fell out with the coach, who was Ian Stewart. Okay. And uh, Ian came to Carlton in 78, and... Uh, I was captain, and we got smashed in the opening game against Richmond, beaten by 10 goals. And I can remember he, um, we were supposed to have a social function that night, and he called that off. He was really angry. Okay. And uh, on the Monday night at training, as I stepped onto the ground, he called me over, and it was just the two of us, and he said to me, uh, you didn't try. Basically, I told him where he could go. I said, I've been at Carlton for 12 or 13 years, you've been there five minutes, don't you dare tell me that I didn't try. And basically from then, that was the end of uh, our relationship. I was uh, on match committee as captain and he said, don't bother coming to match committee. And obviously he'd wipe me as far as a player goes. I played another four or five games, but it was uh, it was no, no point in going on. And I can remember going into training after about a month, and Jack Rout was the chairman of selectors, and Jack was a lovely guy. I'd known Jack since I went there as a kid. And I said to Jack, um, I've got to go. I said, the coach doesn't want me. And Jack had tears running down his face, and uh, he knew that they had to support the new coach. Yep. I knew they had to support the new coach. And um, I walked out into the car park, got in the car, and drove away and that was that was how I left Carlton. Having said that, Ian Stewart is a friend of mine today. Wow. But at that period, um, I think he was going through a tough time um, and I was probably not as patient as I could have been and I left. So it was as simple as that. Under 19s at Carlton, one dollar a game. Yes. Reserves at Carlton, nine dollars a game. Yes. First senior match payment at Carlton. Uh, Twenty-five dollars a game. <laughs> and I can remember in 1969, I'd played three years of league footy. I'd saved all my money, and I went into Campbell's Motors Preston. Yeah. And I paid one thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars for a brand new red two-door Tirana. So my three three years of footy bought me a, a brand new car, and I was as happy as Larry. Bruce didn't go in and okay. get one with you, did he? No, no, no. 